Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here with an absolutely white knuckle, amazing replay today from I can't pronounce his name because it's a rather interesting spell. When he he's George today. This this is George today. Everyone say hi, George. George is in the amazing tier nine premium French battleship Jean Bar, and he does have the heroic commander. Uh, Philip Ardon, I think that's the way you say his name. You can tell from the pennant that he has uh, at the very top of his mast. Also, he does have the colored tracers as well for his shells. And we will get to see Philip's full array of skills and talents today on display here in this replay. It's it's a good one, guys. Stick around for it. So anyway, the Jean Bar, for those of you that don't know, it is a Richelieu battleship. It's... Pretty much as far as the hull goes, as far as the armor and the hit points, it's exactly the same as the as a fully upgraded Richelieu, but that's where most of the similarities end. The, sh the ship is actually slower than the Richelieu. It's a full two knots slower than the Richelieu, and I believe that's because it has a lot more, well, more on it. <laughs> If you look at the Jean Bar and the Richelieu, Jean Bar has far more secondaries and far better secondaries than the Richelieu. It still has the same um, triple turrets in the back, but as far as all, all up along the sides, she's got a very similar secondary loadout to the Alsace. Now, is it good enough to warrant a full secondary build? I don't think so, no. Um, I'll, get, I'll explain more as, as why to that in a second. This also has a much, much, much better A than the Jean Bar, uh, than the, I'm sorry, than the Richelieu. The Jean Bar, I mean, the Richelieu is already a very nice AA ship. The Jean Bar just kind of takes it to the next level because the Jean Bar is pretty much the 1950s refit of the Richelieu class battleships. Now, the main guns are exactly the same as the Richelieu. She has eight 15 inch guns, all four of the superstructure. And that makes the ship very good at battle tanking and punishing the crap out of anything in front of it. Now, these guns, they are the same caliber as the Richelieu in the same number, and they're in the same position. But that's where most of the similarities end. They reload much faster. On top of that, if you notice right there, and uh, George just activated it, the Jean Bar has the reload booster that the French cruisers get. And that is a very, very nice... Very nice consumable to have on a battleship. If you notice too, the grouping of the Jean Bar shells is also very, very good as well. These, um, the ship is much more accurate than the Richelieu, and it's just lovely. Now, of course, the trade-off for this is that you do have a tier eight hull at tier nine, which means for most of the games you're going to get, which are going to be tier ten games, you're going to have tier eight levels of armor. Which, if you think about it being a tier 8 ship like the Richelieu, you do get up tier it a lot anyway. So it's not that big of a deal, and it's a very nice balance in my opinion. In addition, the ship does also have the speed boost consumable, or the engine boost consumable, as you can see he is using right now. But anyway, on to the action. Now you may have noticed that George here has been shooting at some broadside cruisers, and he's been getting a lot of overpins. That is because French Velocity is that good. It is one of the aggravations of the Richelieu, the Jean Bar, and the Alsace. Uh, the Tier 8, which is the Richelieu, and the Tier 9, tier, and with the two Tier 9 French battleships, uh, the Jean Bar and the Alsace, they overpin the crap out of cruisers. Not to say they can't do devastating strikes against cruisers, which they sure can. The cruisers just have to be angled so that the armor is thick enough to where you can get full pins on cruises and that's when you do that fantastic damage. That's also another drawback of the Jean Bar. You do have 15 inch guns at tier 9 which means you're going to be getting a lot of bounces even off of some bow on cruisers sometimes as well depending upon the cruiser. So that Fiji he just went bow in to George. Unfortunately he does get one pin off of him but he also does only get one over pin as well. So if you look at the situation, it looks like most of George's team has gone straight down B, which is interesting to say the least. I've never really seen that on this map. It's usually a fight for C and A, and usually the the game ends in just a giant mess at B, which is pretty fun on this map. Uh, Shattered. Look, there's his first kill of the game. 
Now, Philip does not have an achievement for Flesh Blood like a Soroku Yamamoto, so no talent activated there. Ooh, Amagi, broadside out, 13 kilometers away, well within John Bar's. Well, John Bar doesn't really have too much of a threshold for it shows going all screw. I mean, at long range, of course. The shows aren't going to be as accurate as they are at close range, but it's not like the the um, Russians where they have a sweet zone. So, ooh, 6,000 damage there. He did pop his reload boost. You've noticed his, his reload time is down to about 11 seconds now. I suspect he does have adrenaline rush. He didn't include his captain build, so I'm not exactly sure what he has equipped. Ooh, nice citadel there, 18,000 damage, and knocked out a gun temporarily. Now he's back up to a 21 second reload. Looks like he does have a main battery build, judging by the dispersion of his guns and the reload time. He didn't include his module build either. So Philip, so George, if you're watching, please let us know in the comments down below what is your build on the Jean Bar? Unless I missed it in your email, which I don't think I did. So he's got an Ismo about five kilometers in front of him. As you can tell he doesn't really have a secondary build. I suspect he may have a a slight AA build as well, which is why his secondaries are out as far as they are. If you look right now, his team is up by uh, three kills. Oh, well, he's up by two kills versus the enemy team. His team only has one, well, a cruiser and a battleship down now versus two cruisers and a battleship down on the enemy's team. And this Amagi looks like he's about to expire real soon. Amagi turns in, trying to minimize the damage that's going to be coming in from George. And it almost works, but the New Orleans finishes him off. So it looks like things are pretty clear here on the seaside. I'll say that mad just dog pile down the middle took the took a big old chunk of sh out of uh, ships out of the enemy team. Now, unfortunately, if you look at the mini map, George's friendly carrier has been spotted by that Yugimo way out there, and the carrier is attempting to run away, and it looks like he's just throwing whatever planes he has available at that Yugimo. But of course, the Yugimo is faster than Lexington. Lexington is actually a pretty fast carrier. But destroyers are faster. So George is trying to get a shot off on that Yugimo like a good battleship player. Um, what would be useful is if that Kitakazi tried to make a run up north to help out the Lexington. Grand could he get there in time? I'm not sure, but he sure could get to distract the Yugimo while the carrier escapes. But again, we're looking in hindsight, and ooh, Lexington just got a big old chunk taken off and by I'm assuming either the Alsace or the FDG. Probably the Alsace. I don't think the FDG could make that shot. So he's at 2,000 health now. And George is still looking at him, trying to see if he can get a shot off on him. Here he goes. Puts a big old lead on and takes a shot. 21 kilometers away. Ah, the Alsace finishes off the Lexington. And will George land those shots? Actually, looks, ah, look, the grouping looked pretty good. If he had led him a bit more, he maybe would have landed a couple of hits there. Sad days. But the Lexington does pop a fighter over the Yugimo to keep him spotted for the rest of his team so they can avenge him. There's like there is a friendly battleship that was moving up. Yeah, that, like that Bismarck was maybe trying to move up north to help him out. So up in B you have another, uh, well, an enemy Bismarck in B along with a friendly Tirpitz. That, that, that's going to be an interesting fight there. And looks like the enemy team is starting to catch up on kills. The, they've, they've sunk the carrier and a battleship and a cruiser. While George's team has still only has the two cruises down to the two battleships. So we've got a Seattle, a Zara. And George is moving into B, which is a good thing. We do like to see battleships moving up and getting in the action. We're just staying back and out of the way. He's detected by planes. So the enemy carrier is around somewhere. And ooh, mm, I suspect if those shells would have hit that those would have some pretty nice hits. On that Seattle, he pops his reload booster. So he does have a Seattle presenting him at a pretty good angle for a Jean Bar. Will he get any hits off on this the salvo? Now he does something interesting here. He turns off his AA. I'm not sure if he meant to maybe he thought he had it off, then he went to turn it on. Or if he was maybe setting up, ooh, there's a hit on the Seattle there, but it's just an overpin. Or if he was maybe trying to just troll the carrier and get him to come a little bit closer, then pop it on and just wreck him. And the Turpets and the Bismarck take out each other, irony. And, and Alsace is now moving in to B. So if you'll notice now, the kills have kind of stabilized. The friendly destroyer has been sunk along that Bismarck, and now both teams have five ships down. But unfortunately for George's team, they are down a carrier which is a big disadvantage 
So George is now in a bow tanking position versus the enemy Alsace. And uh, I mean, he's in a pretty good position considering he has a John Bar. He has switched over to HE to deal with the bow on Alsace. John Bar decides to actually have some pretty good HE, especially with the fire rate. So there is a good call there. There. Looks like the friendly Atlanta is beginning to open open up on the Alsace. But if you notice, the friendly Atlanta is shooting a lot of AP at the Alsace when he should be shooting HE like George is. And here comes the enemy the enemy planes and he pops his AA back on. Again, I'm not sure if he was trying to troll the carrier there or whatnot because Jean Bart does have some monster AA. But anyway, um, George, if you want to explain yourself, still feel, feel free to in the comments down below. And ooh, second defender knocks out his engine and causes flooding, but he quickly pops his damage con and gets that settled up, settled up. Hits a superstructure of the Alsace for another, what was that, 5,000 damage there using HE. Switch over to AP now, because the Seattle is moving in, and there is that Atlanta as well. It is not a British cruiser, it is an Atlanta, so I'm not sure why he's shooting AP. So Seattle is now bow on to George, 7 kilometers away. Looks like he's turning pretty hard there. And will he get him? Looks like the island ate a good bit of his shells, but they're going to get some pins off on the Seattle. It's about 7,000 damage there from the Seattle, and he has broken 100,000 damage now. So there he's still going off against that Seattle. Seattle is still moving closer and closer into the Jean Bar. Um, do I? I don't really know why the Seattle is doing this because American cruisers do not have torpedoes, so it would have been wise for him to keep his distance away from George. So George aims at his turrets, so he's trying to knock out his turrets. I uh, guess the bounce, I'm assuming, off of the turrets and an overpaint off of his superstructure. So now he has a Seattle, an Algerie, and an Alsace all right in front of him. And there, again, there's that Atlanta who's spamming AP instead of HG. Yeah, I guess he's a new Atlanta captain. I don't know why. He would be shooting AP in Atlanta. Hits the Seattle in the face for three overpins and 3,500 damage. Algerie's going broadside on in front of him. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about the Seattle, thinking about the Alsace. He's going to go for the Algerie. Enemy Seattle just took out the friendly Missouri, and that was also George's division mate. Friendly Atlanta takes out the Seattle. Algerie broadside on to George, and goodbye Algerie with a Citadel. And there's the friendly Atlanta who's decided to show himself to the enemy Alsace. Uh, again, not really sure what he's doing here. And Alsace naturally shoots at him, and goodbye Atlanta. All right. It's an interesting game so far. So now this enemy Alsace is moving up on George. Now the Alsace doesn't look like he has a secondary build. His secondaries are missing quite a lot. Most of Alsace captains do go with a secondary build. Um, but this guy doesn't look like he has. They're missing a lot even if he doesn't have manual fiber secondaries. If he had a secondary module he would be uh, landing more secondary hits here. He could have a main barrier build on his Alsace which is also a viable option. Uh, George was shooting him in his turrets there, seeing if he can knock out his turret. And Alsace is moving in, turning in, not, not turning too much into ram. Uh, friendly cruisers right behind George. Looks like George is maybe trying to block the path of the Alsace, force him to the island, which he does right here. Waiting for his turret to turn around, some more, some more, where he get the flat face of his turret, shoots his turret, knocks his turret out temporarily right there. And that Alsace is shooting at the cruiser, which is behind John Moore. There's a carpet bombs from the Implacable. And he has turret again. That turret's already knocked out. And there you go. Breaks the turret. Takes a third of the Alsace's uh, firepower away. Alsace only has eight guns instead of 12. Uh, friend, what was that? that? Was that an ARP cruiser? I think that was an ARP cruiser. Aiming again at the second turret, or the barbette for the second turret, trying to save his cruiser's life, which he does manage to knock out the turret there temporarily. But the Alsace gets his third turret off and finishes that Mayoko. So now it is solo warrior time. George is up against one, two, three, four, five. So you can get solo warrior out of this match if you manage to pull this off. Aims at the upper armor of the Alsace, or again, maybe he was trying to knock out his second turret. But it fails to do that, just gets a bunch of bounces. He's at 1.6 million potential damage right now, and when it, uh, Philip gets to 2 million potential damage, that is when he activates his, what, his first of his special talents, which is, I think, um, what, like, composure under pressure, something like that, to where, there he goes, knocks out his turret again. 
to where the ship he's he's commanding gets a 5% boost to his speed. And uh-oh, here's an FDG, and he does have a secondary build, as you will see here in a second. There's uh, semi-armor piercing rounds from the Zara. Alsace has no more guns left when the front goes in for the ram, and whoo! George manages to finish, his, finish him off there with a salvo to his superstructure. And look at those secondaries from the FPG. Extremely accurate. There is his speed and composure talent. That's what it is. So the Jean Bart now has a 5% boost to its speed, which, okay, it's a battleship. Not going to help that much, but hey, it's something. FDG six kilometers away, aims at his upper bow, and goodbye, FDG. <laughs> Four pins, one citadel. Gets devastating stride, and that activates his fully armed talent, which now gives the Jean Bart another boost to its reload. To which, if you notice, he has around an 18 second reload now without his reload consumable. If he still had his reload consumable, uh, well, if he had any of it left, if he used that, he would have roughly a 9 to 8 second reload on a quarter health. That's some firepower. She's at 224,000 damage, le uh, damage now. He's got three ships left he has to deal with Azara. Uh, Yugimo and the Implacable. Now, if he can manage to deal with the Zara and the Yugimo, he, the Implacable, mm, he can still do some damage to him, but over time, his AA would simply just whittle down the Implacable's planes. But if you notice, he's also out of repairs. Speaking of the Zara, there it is, nine kilometers away, almost fully broadside, turning away from George. There we go, 18 second reload on his main battery guns. Eh, nothing really too bad happens to, to, well, nothing happens to George from that salvo. Manages to get two pins into the Zara. Now, Zara does not have a heal, but does have semi-armor piercing rounds, which are pretty much HE rounds with slightly better pins, but they can't start fires. So, if he does get some good hits on George's superstructure, that can hurt, the, hurt him pretty bad. So, George knows this now. The destroyer has to be over at sea, because that Zara wasn't in the cap and sea was being flipped. So he now knows where the, his two biggest threats are at. The Zara is slightly north of the sea cap. The Yugimo is probably within the sea cap. And the carrier, I, I don't know where the carrier is gone. He's decided to, it seems like, just leave George alone. Which is interesting. The uh, Implacable could simply, simply, simply be out of planes and can't afford to send any more to George. There's a Zara 10 kilometers away. And... Ah, overpins. Again, French AP is going to overpin most cruisers, especially Italian ones. Ah, uh, Zara pops his um, perpetual smoke screen, or no, his exhaust smoke screen, that's what it's called. If those who don't know, that's basically he can go as fast as he wants to and he will stay un undetected because the smoke screen deploys co constantly. So, he can't see the Zara, but the Zara can't see him. Now, the Yugimo has an idea of where he's at, so it's likely that he's about to, that he could come just barreling around the corner any second with his torpedo tubes ready to go. Granted, an Jean Bar could maybe get rid of a Yugimo in one salvo if all the shells hit, but the Yugimo would also have to, well, do that as well. And there's the Zara's torpedoes. George slams on the brakes and turn, but it turns out it's not good enough. He gets a little bit of flooding. Ah, there's the Zara again, nine kilometers away. Somewhat angled to him, exactly what does, what uh, George needs for those shells to pin. Sally just taps his superstructure. So he's being targeted by just the Zara, so he knows the the Yugimo isn't shadowing him just yet. But the Yugimo could also be dumping his torpedoes down the channel right there in between the north and south side of sea, right to, yep, he just looked there to check. And... Mm, another overpin on the Zara. Infuriating, I know. Zara is turning a little bit now, showing a bit of a better target for George to pin. Again, checking that channel, see if the Yugimo is about to pop up. And turns again to avoid the shells. And did those miss? Those did miss completely. Sad days. So George now pushes up in order to keep the Zara uh, within spotting range. Unfortunately, Zara goes undetected, but he was turning to give him broadside there at the last second. Again, still waiting to see how the Yugimo was going to pop up behind him. 
gets one pin now and one over pin. He is capping C, so he knows that Yugimo is not hiding on the other side of the island from him. Eight seconds left. Sorry, three dots out. There are the Yugimo's torpedoes. Yugimo fires, misses, secondary return fire. He gets the Citadel on the Zarya. It's Kraken unleashed there at the very last second. But unfortunately, not a win. A hard, hard, hard attempted carry there from George. A great replay. Really show the strengths of the Jean Bar off right there. And I gotta say, that was that was definitely one of those matches where I just leaned forward in my chair about halfway through the replay. Great replay. Thanks for sending it in, George. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed watching and hope you guys did too. And um, just really showing the strengths of the Jean Bar off there. Alright guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We are on our way to 7,000 subscribers. We are almost halfway there. Just, I believe, 60 or 50 more subscribers as, as of me recording this, and we'll be at the halfway point to 7,000. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. I hope to catch all of you guys in the next one.